his kids, and I'm probably older than most of them, not all of them, so I guess I can call them kids. <laughs> if you're bothering us, and that's, that's strange, but it just is what it is. Uh, get your Bible ready. I believe God's given me a word for today. I don't ever want to stand before you without one. Sometimes they come way in advance. Sometimes it's like they come right at the last minute for me. But I try to live in a state of constant preparation. I try to live in a position of just going and hearing and getting downloads from heaven and, and uh, saying, Lord, this is for your people. Because when I preach, my preaching is not for me. Now, the Word is for me. I need it as much as you need it. But my gift of the anointing on me is not for me. It's for you. It's for you. It's for others. It's for, sometimes it's for the law. Sometimes it's for the body. Sometimes it's for leaders. It's amazing how that when we give place to the work of the Holy Spirit, that in one atmosphere, one service, He can shoot light and love and strength and grace and answers and direction in so many different ways. And if you want and you're looking and you're mining for the things of God, you'll get something that you needed for that day. Look at your neighbor and say, hallelujah. Come on, put a J up in that silent word. Praise God. J. Go Caribbean with it. Hallelujah. Oh, my. James chapter 5. <laughs> James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. That was a long time, wasn't it? And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. I want to stop there. We talked a lot about revival, the move of God. We will continue to do that in some capacity because it is so necessary and I really don't see any hope for our world or our nation without it. Certainly not for the church. And revival so much is for the church and the church can give way to great awakening. There's been two in history that were poured out through the kingdom into the earth. We need a third one. It's not happened yet. But it can give, be given place to when the church accepts revival. I'd like to tell you everybody wants it. They don't. They should. But they don't. I want to use for a subject today, though, let it rain. Everyone say, let it rain. Turn to someone, smile, and say, oh, Lord, let it rain. Rain is referred to in the Scripture as blessing after drought. It is a symbol, rain is, of God's love and teachings to spread over the world. And it is also even a, like a flood, it produces a flood that can wash away the sins of a corrupt world. Now think of that, and I'll move more into that as we preach today. So rain is this, but rain is more. Rain is also the deluge of the outpouring of God. Sometimes the outpouring of God is like a Niagara, like the mighty Niagara Falls. Sometimes the mighty outpouring of God is like when you, I'll be out exercising and my, our road runs east and west until it takes the curve back toward Highway 8. And there'll be times I'll be either power walking or jogging and I'll look way down those fields and the, cloud, and the clouds are dark. And I can see the rain coming. And it's at that point I have a decision to make. Am I going to keep on trekking and get soaked? 
Or am I going to turn my blessed assurance around? A little fun there. And take off running back to the house and see if I make it. But you can see the deluge of rain coming. And when I was a kid, I loved the rain. I loved to walk in the rain. I loved to, to play in the rain. I don't know what it is. We get older, we, we, we try to avoid the rain. But I'm believing for mighty, holy ghost rain. Everyone say, let it rain. Now, I want you to think about this. Where would we be if we had no rain? Look at it naturally and spiritually. Where would we be if we had no rain? Maybe you're in a place right now, you ain't had no rain in your life. And I, don't, I mean spiritually now, in a long time. Not a good place to be, is it? I'm going to keep moving, but it's not a good place to be. Where would we be without natural rain? Though rain is inconvenient for us many times. I mean, it's inconvenient if I'm trying to, yeah, I don't mind getting wet with sweat, but I don't want my tennis shoes sloshing with water. And I, when I was a kid, I was out in it, and I didn't care what got sloshed with water. But it's way easier to power walk and run when your feet are dry. That's a little insert there for you that are thinking about doing that or for you that have done that. You're welcome. Free sideline commercial. Nice guy. The rain sometimes is inconvenient for us, and it is inconvenient for all of us at times because it affects our schedule. I mean, our outdoor plans, it affects... You know, some people, dear God, is pathetic, but it stops some people from coming to church. I didn't say tornadoes. I didn't say storms. I said a little bit of rain. I still go to Walmart, but stop. Yeah, I'm just meddling. I had to insert that right there. Just a little sign that you're backslidden. If you, if you won't come to church for rain, but you go every other place, you're welcome. I had to throw that in there. If you didn't like it, I said it twice. Amen. And so it, it, it is inconvenient at times. Um, but we would drive without it. Without rain, we'd thirst to death. Without rain, no showers. How many of you are grateful for showers and baths? How many wished everybody was? <laughs> we would dry up. I'm being a little humorous, but we would dry up. We we are a high percentage of water ourselves. Without rain, without the constancy of rain coming, we would dry up. And furthermore, in this hour, we need to learn to dance in the rain. I come in from a long jog one day, and I, you know, you have a little stuff in your house, and if you have a, if a bride like mine, she has a way of putting stuff in strategic places. And we've been given many gifts through the years, and when we get a gift, we try to find a place for it. And that's not always easy when you got more gifts than you got spots. And I, I, I come around the corner in the kitchen. I'm dripping with sweat and because I'm soaked. It's been a pretty long run, and I was hot. And I looked up on top of the refrigerator, and there was this plate on an easel. And on it, it said, life's not about waiting for the storm to pass. But it's about learning to dance in the rain. Man, if there's ever been an hour where we need to learn to dance in the rain, it's now. We need to be believing for the rain of the Holy Spirit, the move of God in our lives. But there's other stuff raining down too. Judgment is raining down because of the seeds that have been sown and harvest are taking place. There's the rain of the chaos of decisions of other people and sometimes mistakes we've made in our own past. But we don't need to wait till everything gets better. We need to learn to dance our dance, praise our praise, celebrate our God, shout our shout, learn to dance in the rain. That's a good side note. Rain is key for growth, development, increase, and harvest. You know, not only do these glasses match my coat, but something about that. When I put these on, those words just seem to get bigger. It's an oddity. So rain is key for growth, development, increase, and harvest. And everybody wants growth, development, increase, and harvest to the good. Because your neighbors say, well, you know we want that. I, I, a big, big, big question here. Big. No. 
statement, not question, statement. When it has been a long time in the heat of the summer without rain, everyone say, oh, no. That phrase, without rain, is something that we should resist, especially when it comes to Holy Ghost rain. But in the heat of the summer without rain, and the grass has begun to brown, and the earth becomes cracked and parched, and we, if you've lived very long, you've seen that before. Then, when a sudden rain comes, you can literally watch the grass and the life around you revitalize before your eyes. I have watched brown grass act like you do if you've ever been real hot when you get a nice cold glass of ice water. Now, that most times I got a certain, certain kind of soft drinks or, or health drinks, and I'm doing way better on stuff like that, that I like when I'm really, really, really hot. But when you're really, really hot and you're really, really parched and you're really, really thirsty, nothing is better than good, cold, sweet ice water. And you see the grass coming alive. The flowers start perking up. Everything starts perking up because there's life in the rain. There's sustenance in the rain. There's recovery in the rain. There's help in the rain. We need the rain for growth and development and increase and harvest. We need the rain. And it's like all things are made new and renewed again. Oh, the rain of the Holy Ghost. You could, have had, you could have had a tough week or a tough day or gone through some things that in retrospect you look back and you think, how did I make it through that? But then you experience a moment of the rain of heaven and the rain of God's presence. And it's all like it was bad, but it, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was because God's presence, what does it do? It's like He makes all things new and He renews things again. Man, I cannot imagine trying to be a Christian believing the Bible but practicing none of it. I can't imagine what it's like trying to be a Christian that says I believe in Jesus but I don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? I can't imagine what it was like to be a Christ follower stuck in your comfort zone and your complacency, your passivity and your lethargy when you can have access to the reign of heaven if you want it. I want everything the Holy Spirit makes available because I don't just need the luxury of the blessing. I need the impartation. My family needs it. Our community needs it. Our humanity needs it. Are you grateful that you have a presence of mind that you are aware you need the rain and you're ready to use your faith and your confession and not sit on your hands but lift your hands in your hearts and say let it rain Lord. I yearn for your rain and I'll pray until I'll seek you until not long ago wasn't many days ago, it was this year, it had gully washer, toad stranglers, stranglers. There's your word. And if you ask Miss Regina, who's a great teacher, she will tell you there's no such word. <laughs> but I just created one. It rained. I don't know how it would come. It rained cats and dogs. Boy, if it ever did, that would be a Unless it rained chocolate laps, and it maybe it'd be okay, man. Poodles, Noel said. Some of you German shepherds, I know, and stuff. But I mean, it had rained. It washed everything. I was turkey hunting early one morning. It was cool, about forty-five degrees, and um, turkey starts gobbling on the edge of a little ridge and down at the bottom, and it was in a spot where. If it had been dry, it'd have been, it, didn't, it wouldn't have mattered how good I'd have walked. It would have been crunch, 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 crunch. I mean, it would have just almost been impossible to move in on that bird. But because everything was soaked, everything was wet, and everything was beautiful. And you could hear the, the rainwater dripping off the leaves. And it had stopped hours before, but everything was clean. It's just like when you first turn your shower off. And it wants to drip those extra drips just for a few seconds. Except it wasn't for a few seconds. It was for the majority of the morning. Everything was cleansed. 
everything was refreshed. It was like everything was new and any the pollen was washed away. Raise your hands and somebody thank God that the pollen got washed away. That yellow stuff went somewhere, hallelujah. I mean, it, it was gone. It, it was just clean. It smelled clean. It felt clean. I, I love that, but greater than that, it's when heaven's rain comes on your life, when heaven's rain comes on your family, when heaven's rain comes on your marriage, when heaven's rain comes on your children, when heaven's rain comes on your ministry, preacher, when heaven's rain comes on your life. Oh, you feel clean. Why? Because you are cleansed by the rain of heaven. Hallelujah. In the text, we see two different aspects. Not going to rain and now going to rain. Not going to rain and now going to rain. I read them to you. The prophet prayed, no rain until I say. Now God inspired him to do that. You don't just pray a prayer like that. I just come up with this idea. I doubt it. That was a God-inspired prayer. But he still had to pray it. God inspires, but we still must act. This is where the danger of false religion that I've got everything, but I don't have to do anything. Bad teaching. Faith without works is dead. God initiates, but you move on it. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord, how much of the man of God done teaching up in here today. And then after the three and a half years, <laughs> after three and a half years, he prayed again, and it went from not going to rain to now going to rain. What was the issue then? What caused the jump? Idolatry. Idolatry was the issue that caused the prayer that would withhold rain, motivated by God, but followed out by the prophet. And the same God produced the motivation to bring a prayer that would bring fresh now rain. <laughs> Everyone say fresh now rain. Everyone, please, if you believe in the things of God, say, Lord, let it rain. Fresh now rain when the idolatry had been addressed. Not accepted, accommodated, and tolerated. But addressed and removed. Both motivated by God, but carried out by repentant people. I quoted Brother um, Jim Rayleigh recently, an apostle. He put a little post on his page. He said, you know, so much of the church is offended and appalled when they're challenged to repent. And of course, they're just people who go to church, not the real church. Because the real church realizes that repentance is a gift. Repentance is significant and important. But then he said, but there's people in hell. All of them. Wish they had one more chance to repent. And it's always, ladies and gentlemen, the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And this motivated by God was carried out by people. Because you don't just accommodate idolatry. It has to exit your life. But until you repent and acknowledge the devilishness of it and the godlessness of it, you will continue to practice it. And sad to say, because of too many silent voices, that ought to be speaking up, even in this hour, I got prepared for this years ago. I was prepared for this years ago. The old preachers taught me that day like this was coming. And it, the Scripture bore out that the, the strangest of the hour that's in. But we now live in a time where people who stand in the position that I stand in are giving people excuses to live ungodly lives. And the problem with that, besides everything is that when you live an ungodly life, you get ungodly results. And then they want to get mad at God because they're doing what the preacher said. That's not what God said. I don't want to be that preacher. And I don't want to be that parishioner sitting under that poison. Because we don't need that. We need, we need to remove what needs to be removed so rain can come. Idolatry. What, what is idolatry? Well, idolatry is, I'm going to get ahead of myself. 
Idolatry is anything. It's any person. It's anything. Place that you put between you and God and that you make your source and that you build your whole world on that. Or it is the filter through which all things happen in your life. And you don't have to have a gold image in your house. Because anything that's between you and God is not a gift from God. You know what's crazy? God has blessed people with things and they turned them into idols. We humans are sometimes are goofier than us. God will bless us with something. If we don't have enough character to fill a thimble, some people. And so rather than appreciate the blessing and honor God for the blessing and keep it in right priority, we use it as a tool of backsliding and pulling away. But that's the danger of idolatry. That's the reason why most people can't stand to be blessed. Because most people will not value the God of the blessing. They get sucked up in the thing of the blessing and they... Forget where it came from. Mm. As long as there was idolatry, there would be no rain. Many people want God to send blessings into their lives without wanting Him to change their lives. Everybody just sort of do this with your eyes. I'm just going to let that soak in. These people want God to do something for them while their lives remain idolatrous. Some of them even talk in tongues. Idolatry is any unauthorized person, place, or thing that you look to meet your needs as your source rather than God. He done said that once. And let me go country with you. And he's now said it twice. Twice. How many of you southern enough to have heard twice? And some of you keep looking at me like I'm going to say it thrice, but I, I don't, I'd rather not. I'm kidding. Idolatry is any unauthorized. I've already said that. There are a number of people that want God's stuff, but leave my life alone, God. Leave it alone. I like church, but I don't want this revival. If I sit down on it long enough, maybe pastor will get the message. You don't know me, do you? I don't get my message from you. I get it from heaven for you. I love you. You, you, You've never tried to be Holy Ghost Junior. What you stand for, what you sit on, what you step into, what you back off from ain't going to move me. Because I can't lead you like that. And you don't need a leader that way. So if that's in your head, just get it out. But if it's not in your head, just praise the Lord and be glad for those who it's in their head that I said it. Amen. It's the goodness of God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll make sure I don't get past that. Yeah, there are a number of people that want God's stuff, but they want God to leave their life alone. And these people are idolatrous because they've chosen things that cause them to gravitate to what will make their lives worse. But what they need is the reign of heaven. And it's the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God. This is how the Holy Spirit said this to me. It's the goodness of God that withholds the rain from their lives so that they can have a space of grace to repent from their idolatrous nature. It's the goodness of God that says, No, I'm holding back the rain so you won't just get a blessing and be empowered to keep going the wrong way. I'd rather reign in your life. I'd rather move on your life. I'd rather bless your life. But I can withhold it because I love you more than what I would rather do. That ain't no big deal for somebody who don't care about being a blessing. But our God is a blessing God. 
All through the old covenant. He's a blessing God. And I don't know what these so-called New Testament jacklegs are up to trying to make it seem like. He's not a blessing God anymore. If he quit being a blessing God, then he never was the God we thought he was in the first place. He is a blessing God. He's a good, wonderful, glorious God. But he loves us so much, if he has to, he'll withhold the rain so you can have the judgment of your decisions. And give you a space of grace to repent. And I heard that in the Holy Ghost this morning. God won't rain on people. So they can share it with an idol. So what they get. They have to get on their own. When they choose idolatry. Without the rain. They'll have to get it on their own. And all they've got left without the rain. Is their stubborn selfish sin. Boy, I was full of that at one time. I was all that before I got saved. I will not live that way. That's who I was. We cannot be dual personality, old life and new life mixed together. The rain gives us the ability to separate and to be fruitful. The ability to repent gives us the ability to access all the good things of God. Look at 1 Kings chapter 18, please. 1 Kings chapter 18. I love you all so very much. Boom, boom, boom. You hear that car going by. Some of you are so entrenched in the moment you didn't hear that guy's bass who probably will not be able to hear in a year from now. And if hopefully he doesn't have, um, what do you call it, hay fib or no fib. After boom, boom, his heart going, boom, 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 looking for sinus rhythm. I, anyhow, I digress. First Kings eighteen, <laughs> verse forty-one. I do love you much. First Kings eighteen forty-one through forty-five. Then Elijah said to Ahab, "He's by the way back. Just just a little side note here. Not side note, but backdrop. Pull you up real quick. He has confronted four hundred fifty Baal prophets, Asherah prophets. He has." Called them to a duel of the God who answers by fire. God answered by fire. Their idol could not because idols can't produce what only God can produce. And when it all got done, the preacher did what needed to be done. He had all the false prophets slain. Kill them all. That's what they did. Now what does that mean to us as Christ followers? It means everything that's idolatrous and false from a backslidden past, needs to die. doesn't need to be broken. It might get glued back together. It needs to be obliterated. It needs to die. Look at your neighbor and say, it's got to go, baby. It's got to, it's got, it's, it can't stay. It just can't stay, y'all. It, it's got to go, baby. You got, it, it, it can't be allowed to live no more. Now, so, go and up and eat and drink, for there's a sound. <sighs> Now, in the spirit, he hears this. In his, in his heart, he hears this. He's hearing something that only comes from God intervention and, and God thought. He said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It ain't rained in three and a half years. It ain't looked like rain in the natural. There still ain't a cloud in the sky yet. But Ahab, who is still a backslidden king, is uh, very respectful of Elijah at this point. <laughs> and he's ready to do whatever. Ahab was backslidden because of Jezebel, his wife. Because he would not stand for what was right. He let a Jezebel woman with a Jezebel spirit run the kingdom. And her problem was not that she was a woman. Her problem is that she had a demon on her that dominated her and controlled Ahab. But that's another message oh, for another time. We're talking about rain up in here today. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Now, for you that are thinking, Sunday or sucker or candy bar? No. It was a mountain. Mount Carmel. Just, I, I knew that. Well, <laughs> good. Now you really know it. He said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And so he went and looked and said, do you see anything? The servant comes back and says, there's nothing. 
And seven times he said, go again, go again, go again, go again. Look at your neighbor and say, go again. Seven times, not five times, which is grace, not six times, which is man, but seven times, which is perfection and completion. Whoa, shout yeah. Whoa. And the seventh time he said, well, got a little hope for you, prophet. There's a cloud, but it's as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. And that's all Elijah needed to know. He said, oh, go and tell Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. I was looking at this text this morning and the Holy Spirit pointed out to me, the rain, the sound of an abundance of rain was coming to bring blessing, but... If the king is going to experience the positive side of the rain, he better get in his chariot and he better get back to Jezreel because it's about to get muddy. Hallelujah. It hadn't been like this in three and a half years. We're about to have a deluge. Some people will be blessed by the rain. Some will get stuck because they will not follow an instruction. How many of you have got your mind made up that you're not going to get stuck because you're playing church or you're a part-time Christian, which is really not not really much one at all. But you're going to be a person. I'm preaching better than you're letting on in here. I'm not backing up, so jump in here with me. Hallelujah. He took, they took the blessing. They, they, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And when Elijah says that, we know it may look bad right now, but change is a coming. Hallelujah. We were led by backslidden prophets. We'd been led into idolatry. We had a weak leader that gave place to it and a demonized wife that was the motivation of it. But repentance and falling on our face and the fire of God has changed everything and he said I hear the sound of an abundance of rain and I believe the rain is a coming Ah, some say the rain is a coming it's actually the rain's coming but I feel I feel my southern oats today the rain is a coming buddy it's a good thing that Ahab was obedient and he had fresh reason to be because he had some godly fear I don't know if his heart was changed or not Shows no evidence in his future. But he had some godly fear. And if you're, if, you're, if you're playing church, I still want you to have godly fear. He got in his chariot. <laughs> made a beeline toward Jezreel. Side note, not in the text. But the power of God comes on Elijah and he outruns the chariot. Steve Austin, the $6 million man. Used to be my, my favorite television show, The Bionic Man. The $6 million man. And he could run 60 miles an hour. In that, probably Elijah had to run somewhere between 35 and 50 miles per hour at least to outrun that horse and that chariot. They can say, you go, preacher, you go, you go now. But the promise of rain, the rain was coming. The drought was over. The dry season was over. And it went from not going to rain to now going to rain. But the rain is not a toy to play with. The rain is provision and blessing that brings about all kind of good things. But it ain't nothing to make light of. It is a blessing. Like everything God provides, we, we shouldn't just flick it off like it doesn't matter. We should, we should realize, oh, what a blessing. I love to catch people being appreciative for everything God does in their life. Every now and then, you'll meet people like that, that they get appreciative for everything He does. I mean, they're just a thankful people. You know, they didn't just do that by accident. They just didn't, didn't fall off the altar and boom, land on their head and get up doing that. They make the decision. I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to be thankful. I appreciate everything the rain's coming on. Matter of fact, I want to make sure that the rain comes and the rain stays. How many of you want to be like some of those rainforests in different parts of the world where it rains and 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 it rains. rains. I want to walk in the rain. I want to live in the rain. I want to dance in the rain. I want to dwell in the rain so that when dry times come, my soul is saturated. My roots are are filled with the life streams of the water of God and the washing of the water of His Word and His provision so that I can be so full that I won't be just about survival, but I can bless others and say, you know what? We may hit a dry spot, but there's something we can do. We can pray. We can trust God. We can ask God, and we can believe God to turn these clouds that look rainless to black 
storm clouds ready to rain from heaven. Clap your hands and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I'm going to run one time. I'll be right back. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you used to do that. Some of you used to just get up and dance. Are you getting old or are you just getting lazy? <laughs> Genesis 7. Genesis 7. God has instructed this man named Noah. It's the Bible calls the preacher of righteousness too. Everyone said, let it rain. He instructed him to build this ark. He tells him what kind of wood to build it out of. It is a gigantic boat. It's, it's, it's more than a boat. It's an ark. It's gargantuan. It's going to carry a lot of animals and a few people. That bothers me. It's a shame this even had to happen. What happens that God has to do, not the devil, God, should have never happened if people had not have become their own God between their ears. But when you become God, it don't matter what you call yourself. Just because you call yourself something don't mean you're doing it. I mean, you, that's who you are. When you become God between your ears, you start doing what's right in your own eyes. You forsake the things of God. And it was a, it was a very, very wicked time. He builds that ark to absolute specificity of what God said. And in Genesis chapter 7, it finally came time for it to go down. Verse 4, Genesis 7, for after... Seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth. God said, I'll cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I've made. Why? Rebellion. Idolatry. And when it comes right down to it, you can have your opinions. And I hear people that don't think very deeply, don't think much, obviously, say things like, well, I wouldn't want to serve a God that will do that kind of thing. Wait just a minute. You're talking about the same one. I said it a little while ago. Or I thought I did. If I didn't, I'm going to say it now. The same God who let you be conceived in the womb of your mother and he didn't have a plan for you to get here and just do whatever the you want to do with your life and miss out on the very purpose that you're here. People think, I just, want, I just need to be happy. No, you need to be whole. I don't have to hear you say that. Such and such preacher, I just, I just need to be happy. But whatever. Which one you want to believe? But if you really want to be happy, please God. Be the God between your ears. People don't want to hear that because it's the God's honest truth. It's too many with too many people. Even so-called Christians, man. That's why people change biblical ethics and say, God understands my heart. No, God knows your backslidden behavior is a reflection of your unbiblical life. It's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. I'm going to destroy from the face of the earth the living things that I've made. Let me tell you something. God doesn't make anything he doesn't love. But God loves his plan more than he loves rebelliousness. And Noah did according to all the Lord commanded him. What was God doing when it rained and it flooded the earth? And all those people that mocked Noah. And all those people that didn't want God. And all those people who didn't had no place for God. Had no time for God. 
God made all things new by cleansing the earth from all of that. All that corruption. He made all things new. That's a strong word. Why? If God does that, He knows they will never repent. Folks, our God, it, we th- do we really think we're better than God? Oh, they're just so good. They're just so good. And they may be, have some good traits in them. But we're nothing in the good comparison compared to God. I mean, if there is any hope. God is so good. He would have spared Sodom and Gomorrah for one person. Abraham jewed him down, pardon the expression, jewed him down to ten people. And I think he got ashamed to ask for less. God would have spared it. Noah's family would be spared because of Noah's love for God. And honor God. That's not a big thing to ask. I'll stick God over here, but I'm going to do this. Well, you are not a Christian. You are something else, but you're not a Christian. If Christ is not in the core of our lives, you're something, but you are not a Christian nor a Christ follower. God was making all things new by removing the problems and the evil. What then is the answer? Go back to the text verse. I'm going to read it from the book of James again. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. Verses 18 through 20. Um, James chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. What is the answer? Well, it said, after that three and a half years, it came time for rain again. We've hit that, but let's revisit it. Then he prayed again. Thank God for the ability to pray again. And when he prayed again, the skies opened over the land so that the rain came again and produced the harvest. Mechanical irrigation is not going to cut it. Putting alcohol in its place is not going to cut it. You can't can't ram money in that slot. You can't put the opposite sex in that place. It rained again, and it produced harvest when the rain from heaven came. Everyone say, Lord, let it rain. Finally, as members of God's beloved family, we must go after. Check this out. Check this out. This is why I preach like I do. We must go after the one who wanders from the truth and bring him, them, her back. For the one who restores the sinning, Believer, back to God, which means you can lose out, not because you fail, but because you quit and you ran from the error of his way, gives back his soul life from the dead. Or better said, gives, gives back to his soul life from the dead and covers over countless sins by their demonstration of love. This scripture says if we don't go after them and show them the way out of their sin, we don't love them. Love is, I'm going to be quiet because I'm just so full of love. Now you're a coward! It's not love! Love has the tough conversation. Love looks in the mirror and has the tough conversation. Y'all ever do that? I talk to me. I need help that only me and God can work out. Do y'all relate to that? I talk to me. I talk to me. I preach to me. I call myself out. I say, shut up, flesh. You're not comparing yourself to weakness. You're not comparing yourself to others. You're not comparing yourself to the plumb line of the natural. you got to compare yourself to who you're called to be and to what the standard of the Word says. And there's joy in that because that draws the rain clouds. Are y'all hearing me? The truth is our children need the rain. Our families need the rain. The church body of Christ needs the rain. Always have, always will. 
And too much of it has never known the rain. And some of it has learned to live without the rain. But for those who have ever known the rain, cannot live without what they know is the will of God. And that is the rain from heaven. Our world needs the rain that is ushered in through the kingdom and His church. The world won't get the rain without the church giving way for the rain. My prayer is this. Let our lives, O oh Lord, become rain magnets that draw the clouds of glory and bring the rain into our world and to our influence. Let me have that music, please, team. Let it rain, Lord. Open the floodgates of heaven. We need your rain that produces streams of refreshing, revival, resurgence, restoration, harvest. Open the floodgates of heaven. Get a little more volume, please. Let it rain. Would you lift your hands to Jesus, everyone? Let it rain. Open floodgates of heaven. Oh, 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 let it rain, Lord. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. We don't want more now. It ain't going to rain. We need the now it's going to rain because you've dealt with our hearts and you've dealt with our lives and you put your finger on the things that need to be removed and you show us the new things we need to do. We hear your voice, we hear your word, and we won't blow it off like dust off of the top of a table. But we value what you say. We don't just write it off for the preacher preaching his sermon. We don't just sideline truth because it makes us uncomfortable. We know our children and grandbabies need your rain. I want my grandchildren to know. I want my family to know. I want my church family to know. I want our city to know. I want our county to know. I want Mississippi to know. I want my home, the United States of America. To know we don't have to sell our soul to the devil, to other nations. We don't have to be so negligent of our blessing to act like fools. But we can look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Oh, Kasheli Tamo Safrabiatai. Open the windows of heaven, Lord. What we're doing without you is not working, Lord. Church without you doesn't work, Lord. It may draw a crowd at first, but it'll wind up drawing flies. And Lord, everybody has the same opportunity if they want it. I don't know how you do it, Lord. But you got ways of revealing yourself to people. And I know it matters what kind of church we're part of. It matters what atmosphere we put ourselves in. It matters what we're willing to hear. It matters how open we'll be. It matters it all matters it all matters. But you got your ways of giving us an opportunity because time and chance come to all. And if it's a chance, I can't imagine you being a chance. I'm glad I took a chance on you, Jesus. And I'm especially glad, Michael, he took a chance on me. Because I could have done him like a lot of people do him. But he didn't hold back on me because of what somebody else does. Aren't you grateful that our Jesus is that one? that will never mistreat you because he snake bit from what others have done.
I'm not so sure about any of us if you press us too hard. Our humanity might get in the way. Oh, but not Jesus. And it's this Jesus releases rain and hope and pours the oil on parts lives. Many of you weren't here Wednesday night. But I spoke about a guy named Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was exiled as a grandson of King Saul because of Saul's bad choices and sins. Exiled to a place called Lodabar, which means parched pastures. A parched place has to be a place where there's no rain. That's why it's parched. But the good news is this. King David, even though his grandfather is gone, his father which was David's closest friend, is gone. King David beckons him to the palace, bringing him out of the parched place into the reign of his kingdom. Call it a play on words. Call it what you want to. But when he got into the kingdom under the reign of King David, the anointed one, all that part's life was done away with. And he had been crippled on his feet as a result of having been dropped. But now he's in the king's palace totally restored. Everything that should have been his is his now. And every time the king has a spread, every time the table's set, Mephibosheth sits at the same table with the king who reigns. and said continually you'll eat at my table how in the world can we play church with a God that good I'm going to say something to you you like it or not but at least you're going to hear it. better quit changing the rules better quit trying to play your own game because you're not getting by. You say, I can't believe it, Brother Chris. They're just getting by. I say, oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. no. Nobody's getting by. Nobody's getting by. But there's a better life than trying to get by with something that's devilish. There's a life that says, Lord, I was full of the devil for a long time. Burn by the fire of the Holy Ghost anything devilish out of me. Do it. Now, most people ain't going to say that because most people are afraid there won't be nothing left. Pride. That, that, you, that you wouldn't say that should, should show you your heart. I mean, if, if God wants something to go, why would we want to hold on to it like rats? Apostles. If an apostle locks on to you, I was in the woods the other day and that same morning, I think the same rain morning, and this possum was milling around the ground and it just climbed the tree and I stopped and watched it. It went about 12 feet in there and it just stopped and looked at me. I took a picture of it. I thought, I can see you, dude. But you're not going to get to lock your jaws on, on me. The rain is precious and valuable. I don't believe America will change without the rain of the Holy Spirit. I don't believe your life will change without the rain of the Holy Spirit. I believe some of you, that you go forward and you take you one step forward, five steps back. I believe you'll never change without the rain of the Holy Spirit. I believe that's why you keep doing that. I, that, 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 I believe that. I believe that it is, it is that, that holding on to certain things that I won't adjust to certain things. That, well, I know you want me to change there, God, but that's just me. That's just who I am. And you've got by with that stuff with people. But God won't let you play that witchcraft with Him. 
Richard, you sure are getting plain. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to lose your mind. I don't want you to go to heaven and get the hell beat out of you while you're here when you should be in the move of the Holy Ghost in your life. I can't believe you're saying that. I can't believe I shouldn't say it. Because I preach in an hour where people act like they're part-time saved. And that's got to change. This is not the way the early church functioned. They were all in. They got the rain. It changed everything. And I'm going to say one more thing. If I'm too hard for you, ask the question why. Because if you're clean, it's not hard. You think I'm hard? You couldn't have took what I got preached when I was a kid. They did, they didn't have a sense of humor. They didn't beat Bob when they said it. They didn't try to lace it in certain ways. They preached like they didn't care if you liked it or not. They had an ugly spirit. Shoot, they'd stay in the altars with you all night long. You can't get these foot kissers to even pray with you. Huh? They'd cast the devil out of you if you had one. Lay hands on your sick body. Pray you through to the Holy Ghost. Come see you in the middle of the night if you needed them. They might not have been sweet pansies. They were, they were carriers of truth. Lies are not going to change us. And ignoring the elephants in the room doesn't make them become nice. Some of the things I'm saying right now are not for everybody, but they're for certain bodies. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But you can't do that without the Word. But with fear and trembling. Everything. As a couple of you, I'd like to lay my hands on your head and break that spirit of complacency off. I really would. I'm not even sure you know it's on you. And I'm not mad at you. I care about you. I just, I just can't help but see it. And I think if I talk about it, maybe you'll figure it out. I love you so much. I care about you. But I only have a few, a little bit of time with you. And it's getting more difficult and difficult as the times get closer to the end time because of the way the world is now and the way the church is now. I'm not perfect. I don't know how to say everything perfectly. I'm not sure I know how to do anything perfectly. But I can't afford to fail you by not trying. And you've never heard me get over on stupid stuff and pile drive over you, you over legalism and just foolishness. But anything that's got God doing this, holding back the rain. You'll die before he'll move his hand if you don't get honest and repent. Now, the, some of the things I've said the last few minutes are not for everybody. But it is for some. Would you stand all over this room, please? I love you, and I'm so grateful. So grateful to be with you. Lord, open the floodgates of heaven. Oh, Jesus. You know, Pete, it's one of my prayers that as this season shift has come into my life, that when you hear my voice, you hear the voice of a father. If 
you don't hear that, I'm sorry. If you don't hear it because you refuse to hear that, I'm sorry for you. But I want you to hear the voice of a father. Chris Vickers, one of the reasons why I love you is I watched you as a father be just gentle and affirming with Gray, but I also watched you light his hind end up. Because you loved him. Can't nobody, can't nobody make you feel like a father can make you feel. Can't nobody make you feel like the father. I hear the Holy Ghost saying He's endeavoring to save people from certain things. Look away from the distraction. Look toward the the, the clouds. Look toward the sky. Look toward the sea. For there's a sound of an abundance of rain. And in my spirit, I can hear it over certain aspects of my life. I can hear it coming toward the ones I've been praying for that are not saved yet. I can hear it coming for the true church that has decided to be the real church in this hour. I can hear it coming where in previous times idolatry had caused it to be denied. Repentance has allowed the skies to get black with heavy rain clouds. And then this rain is not just a now rain, but it's a culmination of the former rain and the latter rain together. At the same time, Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking with us today. Thank you for the time we've had worshiping you. Thank you for the time we've had laughing together. Thank you for the time we've been able to embrace one another and love one another. Thank you, dear God, for the times of hearing opportunity and direction in your word. Thank you for dealing with us because we need accountability. Without accountability, we are destined for failure. We need the accountability of your word, the Holy Ghost, godly relationships, the church. Self-awareness, accountability. Oh, thank you. Thank you for talking to us, not about us. Thank you for getting up in our business. Because we need you to. Thank you for helping us see our blind side. Because we need you to. Thank you for showing us the way that we're really yearning for even if it's different than the one we picked, because we need you to. Thank you for helping us to see what we need to see, because we need you to. Whoa! This past week, and I'm, I'm about to bless you and release you. I'm going to make myself available if you need prayer. I'll be right here. I was in the city that I... Went to school all 12 years. We didn't have to go to kindergarten when I was a kid. I stayed in the sand pile. Grades 1 through 12. Went all through elementary school, middle elementary, upper elementary, junior high, high school. 
I preached basically in the shadows of what the church, the, the school I was brought up in that I did not live for God in. My friends would say to me, Chris, we just, they asked me to pray at our baccalaureate service. I'm thinking, you got to be kidding, man. I'm, I'm a hellion. But they said, you're just different. I thought, how? I now, I know that. I had prayer all over me. I had blood all over me. I had confession all over me. I was just being crazy, but I had people that were claiming me. It was all over me. It was undeniable, Gina. And I couldn't see it. They could. But this last week, I had people that I went to high school with in service with me. And kind of thought went through my head. I thought, they're going to think you're crazy. And then we thought went through my head, dude, you've been doing this for a long time. They thought you're crazy if they're going to think you're crazy. But people who knew me when I was a heathen, community I was raised in, that I went to school with, they came to those meetings. And they came up and wrapped their arms around me after service and just thanked me, thanked me for loving on them and sharing Jesus and bringing that firebrand boy of mine with me. Dear God, that he's not being unfaithful. He's not laying home sleeping. He's in Franklin, Alabama, preaching this morning and all this week. And I can't tell you what it meant to me to see God reign in the city that I should have been an influence in. God gave me another chance. And, and, and if you need one, He's got one for you. And if you've taken the chance and you're running with it, He's got more rain for you. He's got good for you in every situation. Hands uplifted. Father, I bless my church family, these priceless, valuable persons. I thank you, dear God, that today as a cumulative group of sons and daughters, that they hear what you're saying to them. Lord, some things you say to all of us, but certain things you say directly to us. And I know it's that way with me. I try to catch everything you're saying and embrace it all. But you're clear in the areas where i got to hear you. <laughs> in case I can't take everything in. And I thank you for being that way. And I thank you that you've done that today. And I thank you, dear God, for the effect of it. Now, I thank you that your word is going to produce and let it be accompanied by the rain of heaven. Because this message means nothing without the embrace of the available rain. Sedivati shotropalavani. And thank you, dear God, for strengthening these marriages and strengthening these men and strengthening these women and strengthening these young people, Lord, and strengthening parents and strengthening those who work in the marketplace. And thank you, dear God, for dealing with sin that we could come clean of it. Thank you for everything you've done today. Because you hate sin more than anybody and you love us more than anything. You got to. You couldn't have done what you did. I did not give my kids for anybody, but you gave your best for me. We got to be valuable. I'm going to bless you and then I'm going to release you, but I will be right here at this altar. If there's something special you need from God, I want you to come in faith and expectation, and I will be praying with you. But I got caught up in the spirit of prayer and just began to intercede these last 15 or 20 minutes. And that, I think that's a good thing, but I'm available for prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you give place to the rain, and the rain comes in more portion and greater proportion and in new proportions, making all things new. May He cause His light and His countenance to shine upon you. May He establish you in all His ways as they become your ways more and more. 
and may He grant you peace and may you be saturated with His rain and permeated with His favor in the awesome name of Jesus and go out and tell people about your good and mighty God in Jesus' name. You're dismissed. If you need prayer, I'm up here.